we can see an example of some dynamic animations that have been com uh, created completely inside of Builder um, and are fully reusable, modular, and add sort of a dynamic presence to any of your scenes. Um, it's no secret that, uh, that our customers are bursting with creativity. And what we're looking to do is give them an expressive outlet uh, to convey not just visual flair, but meaningful storytelling um, and precise chains of, of information. Uh, so take a step back for a second here. Uh, what is what is a logic graph and how can we use it to increase uh, for storytelling and increased wow factor? So visual programming is essentially a no code solution for being able to build complex uh, software solutions or chains of logic without actually having to know any programming. Uh, it has a quite a storied history uh, alongside traditional software development. A lot of early command and control systems use node based logic because it's very easy to see the flow of, of events that are currently happening. Uh, on the right, we see an example of Grasshopper, who uses it for parametric modeling. And at the bottom, we see uh, an example from Epic's Unreal Engine, which allows you to create uh, completely fully finished AAA commercial games and interactive experiences using just a no-code, uh, node-based logic environment. Um, so there's a lot of uh, different use, uh, use cases for a, re a logic graph. Uh, there's A-B testing, there's interactivity, there is, like I said, storytelling and visual appeal. Um, but specifically what we're going to talk about today is using the, the logic graph to animate our parametric resource system. We have a huge selection of parametric resources inside of Builder, uh, and many of those uh, are, contain quite complex controls. Uh, to set up, and what we want to do is harness the data that we've already accumulated building these and allow our customers to have easy access to manipulate and present that data uh, to augment their storytelling and their interactive experiences. So if we look at uh, this example of an excavator, we have our traditional our parametric handles that control rotation. Um, but if we look a little bit under the hood, we can see that these handles are actually controlled by what are called bones. Um, bones uh, operate in a hierarchy, similar to if you think of a person's skeleton, uh, that tells each bone what, uh, what bones above it in the hierarchy influence it and what bones below it it influences. So these are used to determine our rotation and length handles for our parametric resources. If you think about animating, you can basically break it down, and especially when we get into mechanical animating, which is what we're dealing with here, we can basically break it down into a finite series of discrete steps, right? So if we look at this example, our first step is the approach of the excavator. Our second step is a clockwise 90 degree turn. Our third step is the upper arm motion. And the fourth step is an adjustment of the bucket. Using the same ethos, we can build a very easy to use and easy to understand animation system that correlates basically one to one. So that one node, it represents one step in your animation chain. Now you can mix and match these, run them in parallel, but the basis of it is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. If we take a look at what that looks like now, let's just go over to this guy here. And this is one that I just started setting up a little bit. So if we go here and open up the side sheet and use the more drop down, we have this visual graph option right here. And if we click this, we're going to get a condensed version of our visual graph. Now, every resource is automatically loaded up with a visual graph as long as you tick off the experimental setting in the user preferences. Uh, so if we, what we can do, because this isn't really the best viewport for building your graphs, we can hit this button down here and expand this out. So if we look, for example, at this, uh, at this basic setup, we have uh, what's called, uh, uh, we have a debug button. And what this allows you to do is essentially manually execute the logic for your nodes instead of having to trigger from an event. Um, but we have a variety of events available as well. Uh, if we right click and we go to add node here, 
and then to events. We can see we have all different types of events that can kick off uh, your, your logic. So there's the scenario start event, which the rest of the, the other excavators in this scene have been set to so that their animations start as soon as you load your scenario. We have a milestone change event, which triggers uh, events when the milestone changes. And uh, you can set that up to trigger specific animations or specific chains of events on a specific milestone as well. Um, and then other many other types of events. But for debugging and building graphs, it's very handy to just have a, a button that you can click and test out. Uh, so anyways, if we go ahead and click this button, we get some movement. And if we go back here and check this out, we see that we're moving our base position here being zero. We are moving 30 meters forward over a duration of five seconds. So if we were to go and change this, for example, to two seconds and then play it again, we see we can easily modify the speed. Going a step farther than that, we can actually, uh, once again, either going into our right click menu or you can double click and we have an, a search as well. But uh, if we go into, actually, let's use the search here. We search slider, we have the option of an internal slider. And so what this does is it actually creates a creates a prepackaged parameter slider here on your side sheet so that somebody could load this resource in, not know anything about visual programming, and be able to change the slider to tweak specific parameters that you designate inside of your node graph. So right now, we're, we've got this hard coded. Our duration of the trip is, is two seconds. But if we were to change this to a slider, let's get rid of that. Again. You can also name your sliders. So if we were to name this speed, for example, and then go back here, you can see that simply by modifying really we should have called this duration because the higher you the higher you turn it up the slower it goes technically but you can see we can easily modify resources so let's let's add an actual animation onto this guy so we've we've split this out quite a bit just to show you kind of how how the animation system works but there are easier ways to accomplish animation we go to the add node and then animation here, we have an animate bone option. And what the animate bone option allows you to do is it's a self-contained node where we basically provide it our output of bones. And so this, this handy node right here is kind of our master node. Each resource when it's created is spawned with a master node, which provides an output of all of the properties and information about the particular resource graph that we're in right now. So, if we go and hook up that animate bone node and then drop this down, we now have access to all of the bones that are attached to parametric handles. So if we go back and we look at this, go to adjust, we can see that each one of these handles corresponds to an option in this drop down. So if we take, for example, the cabin rotation. And so we want to go from zero, we're going to go. 180 degrees and we're going to do it over five seconds and so when do we want this to trigger um, based on our previous action of the excavator moving into position we could trigger it when it starts moving while it's moving or when it's finished moving so in this case we're going to trigger it when it's finished moving and if we try this again now We see we've got our result. We're still moving quite fast, so we're probably going to want to turn that duration back down by the end. Too. And let's say we want to make another one. Let's turn it, let's put it back into its original position now. If we just wire this up, the finished node to the trigger node, this ensures that once the original 180 degree action is completed, this second, this action will fire after. And we're going to go from 180 to zero. And let's make this one take three seconds instead. Okay. And so what you're going to notice is the first time you fire this, it will 
still have the 180 rotation on it. But now that we're resetting back to our default values, every time we subsequently loop this, we'll be starting with correct values. And so then we can take this, we can turn the duration up, and we can turn the duration down. But guarantee our chain of events, regardless of changing different parameters. Uh, we could create additional sliders uh, for the start and end positions of the rotation. Uh, so there's really no limit on uh, on what you can do with this. Uh, last thing, let's say that we wanted this to, to loop, for example. Um, if we go into under the logic graph here, How do you I'm open sorry, that? Sorry. How do you open that? Um, the finder, like the search. This for the search, you double left click, double and left then click. for the menu, right click, add node. Sorry, there's two nodes. One's called sequence, and one's called sequencer. So it got me kind of tripped up there for a second. Anyways, so what the sequencer node does is it allows you to. So we'll take the finished uh, action here, and we will feed it into the sequencer, and then we'll take this and feed it into the very first node after the button that kicks off the animation. So what we've done now is we've created a cycle, right? This is gonna go around in a loop, but we have nothing to actually kick off this cycle. So we could use, um, we could use an on scenario start, in which case a scenario start will kick this off and then it will cycle after that. Or we can also plug in our debug button. And if we click it this time, this should now be on an infinite loop. We'll see it return to its original position after. And there we go. So we're really excited. The most uh, incredible innovations so far with the resource logic graph have come from people who are just being exposed to it for the first time. We're, we're very excited for, for what you guys are going to come up with. Uh, and yeah, I'm, I'm very excited for the future of the Logic Graph and Builder. So I just wanted to show real quick uh, how you would export and import these guys. So if I double click on this guy here and we go to the visual graph, I apologize, I'm just getting a couple questions about it. So I wanted to make sure that I covered it. Um, if we hit the export button here, you're going to see it trigger a download right there. And if you... Let's go over here. If we go to resources and equipment, up here we have this import templates button. So what you can do is select the file. This can be in a completely different project or scenario, right? And we can click on that. And there we've got our entire graph reloaded, ready to go. Yeah. So I think we're going to be sharing that is, is just why I wanted to cover this, because people aren't going to know what to do with it otherwise. Yeah, exactly. It's good to have <laughs> those examples as well, because then you can visualize what can be done and like understand what is a template for that. So you can apply that the same logic to different resources. Exactly. So and you can that. clone this. For example, you could clone this, say paste it, and now you have a completely separate one. So you could tweak this, mess it up, break it. And this guy is still pristine. And you've still got your save file to to play with as well. So you're you can always keep wherever your progress is and work.